welcome to Dove Biology Apes Lessons to Go. In this video, we'll be exploring species interactions. Communities are made up of populations of different species living together. As a result, they're inevitably going to interact. Ecologists have identified five basic ways that living things interact with each other in their environments. Those include competition, predation, and three forms of symbiosis. Competition occurs because habitats have limited resources, and so the various species will compete over those resources for survival. There are two basic types of competition. Those are interspecific competition and intraspecific competition. Interspecific competition occurs between populations of different species, like lions and hyenas competing for uh, a shared resource of some prey. Intraspecific competition is competition between members of the same species, so uh, two wolf packs competing over a, a downed animal. Now, as species compete for resources, oftentimes one will be more able to compete um, than the other, excluding the other species from that resource and perhaps uh, forcing it out of that particular habitat. This finding is referred to as the competitive exclusion principle. Um, it is observed readily when we look at the interactions between two populations of paramecium's, uh, P. aurelia and P. caudatum. Grown separately, they're able to, uh, to grow and survive quite well. But once they're put together, there's going to be competition for the resource that they share. And as a result, uh, P. aurelia seems to be more capable of competing for that resource. And so P. caudatum is excluded. And so that's the competitive exclusion principle. Over time, long enough to allow for natural selection to take place, populations of various species may have developed physical or behavioral adaptations that allow them to use different parts of the same resource. This is called resource partitioning. Certain warblers do this by spending at least half of its feeding time in a distinct portion of the spruce tree and by consuming somewhat different insect species. Lions and leopards, they're able to divide up resources by the fact that lions usually take larger prey and then the leopards would take smaller prey. Another common species interaction is that of the predator-prey interaction. In a predator-prey interaction, species called predators will feed upon other species called prey. Predators have to be adapted to catch their prey. Some predators are fast enough, they run after their prey, while others are ambush predators and they'll hide and lie in wait. Some predators need to use toxins, uh, chemicals to paralyze their prey. Prey have to equally be adapted for survival. Uh, many prey species will uh, be fast enough to escape their predator. Uh, others might have camouflage, specialized coloring, so they blend into their background and they're harder to see. Others may produce a chemical which they use in defense. When we look at a graph that shows an interaction between predator and prey, we see a common interaction. Um, with a predator-prey interaction, the predator population numbers are always going to follow the prey interaction numbers. As the prey go up in population, then the predator numbers will follow that. When the prey numbers fall, then the predator numbers will follow. And so when you see an almost an overlapping interaction uh, between populations, you can almost infer that that's a predator-prey interaction. So the last relationship that we're going to look at today is symbiosis. Symbiosis is a close and often long-term interaction between two or more different species. In fact, if we break the word symbiosis apart, we would see that sim means together and bios means life. So it's life together. There are three general types of symbiosis. Those include parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. So the first one we're going to look at is parasitism. And in a parasitic relationship, one species, typically the parasite, is going to feed on part of another organism, which we call the host. 
This is oftentimes seen as a plus minus relationship, whereas one, end, one species in the relationship is going to benefit, while the other is going to be harmed. Uh, parasitism can take a lot of different forms. Um, you can have an internal parasite, like a tapeworm, um, that's going to attach itself to the inside of the host and then consume the, the nutrients from the host from the inside. You can have an external parasite, like a tick, um, who's going to attach itself to the outside of the host and then uh, feed on the host that way. Or there's even a special kind of parasitism called brood parasitism where one bird will actually lay its egg uh, amongst those of the host bird's nest. When the baby bird of the parasite is born, it actually instinctively pushes its siblings out of the nest, uh, killing them. Then it's going to take all of the nutrients uh, provided from the host parent that was normally intended for its offspring. And so this is going to reduce uh, the survivability of the host's babies. Um, a good example of this would be a cowbird. Um, cowbirds lay their eggs in their host nest and then they're going to be brought up by their parents. So we actually, what we see here is not a one bird eating another, it's that's a mommy bird feeding its parasitic uh, baby. The next type of symbiosis we'll look at is mutualism. In a mutualistic relationship, two species are going to interact in a way that they both benefit. We can see this as a plus-plus relationship. The uh, most common one that I, we can typically think of would be, like from Finding Nemo, uh, the clownfish and the anemone. Uh, the anemone provides a home for the clownfish um, and some protection, whereas the clownfish also are going to be protecting the anemone from anything that might eat it. Uh, a rhinoceros and parasite eating birds uh, is a plus plus relationship. Uh, the rhino gets cleaned and the birds get food. Um, a third one that we could look at would be ants and an acacia bush. Um, the uh, acacia provides home and food for the ants and then the ants are going to actually be able to protect the acacia. If anything brushes up or begins to munch on that acacia, uh, the ants will swarm and try to protect um, that bush. Lastly but not leastly, we have our commensalistic relationship, which is a form of symbiosis in which one species benefits and the other has little, if any, effect on the other. So we call that like a plus zero relationship. Um, a good example of this would be like uh, in the rainforest, um, the thick canopy is going to prevent a lot of things from growing down on the floor. So if you want to grow, you need to be up off the forest floor. Bromeliads are a type of flowering plant that actually will grow in the pockets of uh, some of the other trees. Um, it's not hurting the tree that it's growing off of, but itself benefits because it's now off of the floor and it's able to get the light and able to grow. Um, another commensalistic relationship might be um, an egret and uh, a buffalo. Uh, the egret follows the buffalo around eating the bugs that the buffalo might uh, scare out. Um, the buffalo doesn't really care that the egret's there, but the egret benefits from more easily finding the food. The five basic types of species interactions, competition, predation, parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism, all play an important part in the, a healthy ecosystem. Each form of species interaction affects resource use and population size of the species in that ecosystem.